Howdy guys, this is Oakley and it's going to be a 2v2. Some of you had requested that I do with multiple players. I know you guys like seeing that. And also you guys like seeing some of the non-traditional factions in multiplayer. So that'll be the Swaby for instance. That's who we're going to be playing as. My strategy in this game is also going to be one of the rush. Now, I did intentionally think I would charge out here. And so that's what we're going to be doing. You can see how I selected my general. I was looking for that special ability that comes with area vistas but uh, none of those abilities were active at the start of the game so I was kinda pissed I was hoping to be able to activate those at the start and really get uh, a bonus because uh, part of the thing that that Spaby, uh, Swaby specialty general has is sort of the ambush and the first stage of that is like you increase your charge speed and a lot of those abilities I was gonna try and hook that up with a bunch of my warriors and just do an all-out blitz but unfortunately it wasn't active a kind of novel tactic that I'm going to be doing here, and we'll see whether or not it's effective, is going to be fielding five of these scout riders. So typically these guys are really shitty. They're not very good on the, uh, you know, in sustained melee. They don't have the greatest stats, but what they are good at is speed. And so that's what I'm going to try to do against an opponent like Carthage, who may not be the quickest on its feet. And so their point is to scout out what's going on here, as their name implies, and then also hopefully to pick apart any forces who get... Uh, pushed to the sides or left alone and so you can see what I'm doing here is I'm charging forward feigning a retreat and right here what I have in hiding right next to those guys is going to be some spears and archers so what I was hoping my opponent would do charge those forces there out of the woods um, and get drawn into my archer fire so that's what I'm doing here so charging forward cycling back it also allows me to probe and see what's on that flank over on the left side I am charging forward with my cavalry that's something you'll often see me do is just charge forward with cavalry the point for that is to slow down the opponent so you can see here his forces on this side have slowed down however in response he is sending out some cav of his own so maybe not as I intended as it seems to be provoking a battle whereas I wanted it to slow down in any case my opponent here is not taking the bait so I'm going to keep moving up my forces here charge up with some cavalry to pull him even closer my opponent is trying to charge my skirmishers however I do have more guys here and in the scrub in the foliage here it's going to slow him down so he's not going to get close enough to land a strike however you can see playing around with that is like playing with fire it's very hard to do so my opponent is getting out of position on the right however on this left side my opponent is doing an all-out charge it seems like that's probably the best way to counter what's going on here the fact that I'm split up so he's doing a very good attack or on the side my opponent did not fall for it he didn't totally engaged. I'm going to tell my troops to attack. I got to micromanage the side. So I tell my true blood swarms there to attack his guys. I was hoping that his cav would keep charging my cav and as I usually do, I would land a flank attack. I was hoping my blood sworn would throw some of their um, missiles from point blank range into the sides of his cavalry. Apparently that didn't happen. I guess they didn't have enough time and you can see the results that ensued are his cavalry decided to re-engage with those guys, turn around, charge right through them. I didn't get any shots off and it results in a lopsided uh, engagement where his guys, you can see there, only lost one. So that was very, very poor for me and especially with the rest of his army descending on me. It's not at all what I want to do, so it's not boding well for that engagement. Over here, my ally is going to be charging out with his troops supported by spears. I'm going to be circling around the side and you'll see where that leads us to. Over here, I am going to have to do a very, very carefully controlled uh, fall back and retreat type of strategy. And uh, it's going to be hard to pull off, but my guys here at the front, I'm going to throw into shield wall, soak up his cavalry charge that's incoming, and allow the rest of my troops to fall back. I'm going to get some of those blood sworn to sacrifice themselves, hold back the charge, and it should be enough to negate his cavalry. Over here, we are going to be able to knock out the Carthaginian cav. Look at this, I'm charging with my spears, archers raining in some of their fire, and Carthage is going to be adding in more of uh, their own spears to support, but I'm going to flank around with my cav. Over here we are getting a bit of a blob, however look at my troop stats at the bottom, we're all green for the moment so we're holding in there. I'm going to tell my cav to swing around to the left, try and keep his troops from getting around that side. In the center I'm going to charge with my uh, troops here, especially these berserkers, I want to get them into combat as soon as possible. You can also see me popping those abilities, generally you don't want to pop them right at the start, but considering I'm microing over here I figured I'd just go ahead and pop them in any case, just so that they would take effect and I don't have to micro them down the road. Here I'm getting around the flank of Carthage, and now we're back over on this side. So um, I'm neutralizing this flank attack over here. I know with those two cavalry, they're going to be duking it out for a while. My archers, in the meantime, are going to target his uh, his own horse that are pretty close. I know I want to take out those guys, 
And it uh, looks like I'm holding the line pretty well, though some of my Blood Sworn are going to start to crumble. That's going to be the kink in my armor over on that side. And uh, I'm going to relocate some of my Scout Riders over on that flank. They're quick, so they're good for repositioning and doing that kind of uh, maneuvering like that, supporting different flanks. So it looks like we're pretty much enveloping Carthage. Uh, my ally has a ton of skirmishers in his center. They should be picking apart the African Spearmen. That's very good. It's exactly how you want to take those guys out. Now, my opponent is charging in with two more of his own cav, and his general is included in that, so that's going to start tearing into my flank. Over in the middle, my troops are starting to flash and crumble, so because I have so many of my forces over here, I'm essentially facing the entirety of the Bowie army on the other flank, so we really have to wrap this up as quickly as possible. Um, my scout riders are actually doing a surprising amount of damage, so I would say in the initial stages at least, it's very, very accurate. The chaos it's caused and just landing strikes in all the rear of the Punic infantry is very, very good. Swordmasters and more heavily elite troops are holding in there, however you can see right here my general's abilities did not really get charged until now so I'm just going to pop them anyways. Um, I figure the battle's already been done so let's go ahead and keep engaging. Some of my scout riders that are returning, I'm going to send them around this flank, I don't want these cavalry guys you know, uh, hitting my troops. Actually it looks like I redeploy them on the far side so that's a gamble I'm taking, I'm hoping his cavalry won't go ahead and hammer and anvil me. But you can see I'm redeploying some of my idle troops over here to help me out, I definitely need to plug that gap in my line, otherwise it looks like we're going to crumble. My own scout riders back here are messing with the Carthaginian skirmishers. The reason I sent these uh, scout riders to this flank as opposed to the right flank was because I wanted to save my own cavalry. I know they're losing, I know my general's there, and if I can break his own cavalry there, well then it opens me up to allow to smash the rest of my opponent's forces. So uh, it's a pretty desperate fight on both ends, I will say. We're both racing to car uh, basically carve up the enemy forces and force a, uh, a domino effect. However, the problem is by me moving my troops there, basically the Bowie cavalry is going to be going straight for the line of our allied uh, skirmishers in the center. That's a problem. So the forces that I had sent to plug the gap are now going to be sent over to help those guys out. However, it's going to be very, very devastating uh, for those guys to charge in. That's the majority of my allies' army troops basically here. Yes, they decimated the Carthaginian center, but now they're going to be getting their uh, destruction paid back with interest in the form of those cavalry guys charging in. So I'm not sure if my ally saw this just yet, he's clearly not repositioning, so that was a bit of a blunder. My opponent is going to see what's going on with my scout riders trying to flank, he's going to peel off some of his troops. However, my guys here did crumble, I wasn't exactly sure what happened, how my berserkers were knocked out so quickly, but uh, it looks like we are in desperate straits over on this side. And also take note that on the left flank, my opponent has engaged some of his own spearmen, those are going to be tipping the fight ruining my cavalry so it looks like all is lost on that flank or at least in mid uh, you know uh, uncontrolled fall on that flank so we have to do um, what we can to wrap up this flank so it looks like we are able to do that on this wing where we crushed it however some of the rear of the Punic um, spearmen who were kept behind are enough to uh, ward off my troops and keep my scout riders from doing too much damage at the same time, the entirety of my force on the left flank is now collapsing. I think the fault probably lies with me not reinforcing enough, not falling back quick enough, maybe not coordinating with my ally, but uh, it was also due to the fact that over here we just weren't able to crack Carthage just in time. I think that was a problem, probably, uh, I'm not quite sure what to blame it on, but um, you know, if we had reinforced uh, certain areas and made sure to swarm, concentrate fire on the skirmishers, I think those probably could have been used most effectively, but uh, at least I was able to guard the majority of them with my one group of, I think, Spear Brothers over here. So, now it's going to be down to essentially uh, two versus one. Uh, my ally is still alive, however, he's been reduced to essentially Skirmishers, and the rest of his guys are engaged elsewhere. Um, so we're going to be clumping up here, trying to see if we can pick off his forces, and uh, you know, it is still a possibility. I'm trying to regroup my archers. Gonna send out some support here to give them covering fire to retreat back to the blob. Now this is the last of my cavalry troops. They're gonna be charging into these Libyan Peltas. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna work, just considering the fact that he has so many guys in number. So if any one of his units turns around, regardless of the friendly fire that's inflicted, um, he can massacre my guys and knock them out. And it'll probably be worth the sacrifice. So yeah, they're charging in, and uh, yeah, his spearmen are going to get me anyway. So if I were to pull out right now, you know, his skirmishers would turn around and destroy me. So it seems like that unit is pretty much lost. 
These Samnite warriors are actually very, very strong. We weren't even able to kill them. Those guys are pretty much all that remains. Um, it's stuff like that that I think my opponent sh or my ally should have focused on with his skirmishers. I think what he did wrong was probably not focused enough on units like that taking out the elite infantry. However, at the same time, uh, I didn't do very well in this battle considering I lost that total, uh, the entirety of my side um, to the Bowie, and they have significant numbers left. So a good amount of this defeat has been, at least so far, can be pinned on me and the fact that my gamble with that huge scout rider force did not really pay off. Um, it did initially. I think we had pure chaos and a lot of uh, hammer and anvils going on, but we weren't able to capitalize on it and crack Carthage enough. So kudos to the Carthaginian player and what he was able to accomplish. But uh, at this point with Carthaginian infantry and cavalry swarming from the back and the Bowie cavalry right here, yes, we were able to pick off a couple of them, but uh, you can see here the cavalry troops are just going to charge right on through. I only have sp two spears to cover the rest of our forces, so it's definitely not going to be enough but uh cool battle great battle i enjoy these 2v2s not much communication other than the markers that we were drawing on the map but i think overall it was a, a pretty good effort and i'd like to again congratulate my opponents on the battle and my ally thank you for having this again in the comments below you guys can recommend what you like to see uh, I have been recording these videos. These were all in a set that I played uh, right after f I finished the documentary. So I went ahead and played a couple multiplayer battles. Those have been recorded all in first person. Then I do what I'm doing right now and commentate over them. So some of you like that style because it gets... Well, it, it has pros and cons. So for example, this style allows me to show you my train of thought and exactly how I manage my forces, what my groupings are, when I use abilities, stuff like that. But uh, it's maybe not as successful as when I use replays where I can look at different parts of the battlefield. And for example, when I had a question of, you know, how did my um, Berserkers die so quickly, we could go ahead, look at that, and dissect it. But uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this battle. I'll try and get a, I'll try and get a mix of both styles uh, because I know you guys like uh, one or the other, so we'll try and mix it up. As well as hopefully doing more of those massive battles that I've done in the past. If you guys haven't seen, those are usually just going to be me playing with a couple other people in some open lobbies where um, we just try and put on massive battles, take it a little casually, and usually try and do historical reenactments and whatnot. But uh, So make recommendation, recommendations for that other stuff. Uh, in terms of documentaries and more of those professionally done uh, things like that, you know, those come every once in a while. They take a lot out of me. The next one is going to be probably the third or fourth part of the Punic Wars series. So, you know, I'm going to be continuing on that. So that's the first Punic War. That'll be coming out next. I haven't worked on it. haven't put the script together. But uh, that whole series is continuing to chug along. And then we'll probably have more in the future doing Karai and uh, various other battles. In any case, that's going to be it for this conflict. Very well played on all sides. I had great fun and I'm really enjoying the changes and the, uh, the different updates to the factions, although I do feel like Swaby has been left behind and I hope they do get more troops, more versatility in the future, seeing as Carthage is pretty versatile and very strong right now. But uh, yeah, like I was saying right here, I didn't hold up my end of the bargain. 822 kills for me, not very good. Look at the kills. Uh, I think it came down to my longbow hunters. They didn't do very much and also uh, the fact that my uh, Bloodsworn guys just totally ate it and just crashed. I didn't have enough heavy infantry to hold up in a fight like my ally did. You can see here his Swordmaster's got you know over 200 kills whereas my own not nearly that many. But uh, yeah that's gonna be it. Thanks so much. See you next time.